Hello and welcome. I'm Annette Reader from thebiblicalnutritionist.com and it is my joy to have you join us today because we're going to talk about what your doctor didn't tell you about blood work. This is blood work is so important because we get to have an inside view of what's actually going on in our body. Yet too many times you don't know what your blood work actually means. What is it telling you? And sometimes your doctors just don't have enough time to explain the different lab values and how they relate to each other and how you can actually make a difference in those lab values. So many times I've had a doctor say, well, we'll just keep an eye on that and see if anything changes. No, that's not ever what I want to hear. I want to know what does that mean and how can I make changes today? And I have so many stories I could share with you, but I want to quickly bring on, I am here today with Dr. Jay Hidson, and you've already met her on my other videos. She's fabulous. She's, she's here to be your doctor. And just as I'm here to be your nutritionist, and we are here together to help you understand God's recipe for excellent health. And her specialty is blood work. She can, blood work to her is easier than painting by numbers. She just knows it so well and knows how to get the results that you're looking for. But most importantly, how to know what's going on in your blood work. And so Dr. J, welcome back again. Oh, thank you so much. I'm excited to, I'm really excited to talk, talk about this topic today. Obviously it's in my wheelhouse and I think we have some really interesting things to share with everyone. We do. So get us started. Where are we going to start today? Well, first things, is that there is a difference between normal and healthy. So many people are getting told, we got your blood work back and everything's normal. They're not wrong when they say that. It's, there's it, Normal is a, is a value that has been determined um, by, by an industry. And it, well, one of the things too, to be, to, to have some transparency on normal, normal is also defined by regions. So like for instance, in the United States, um, if you are in one particular rate region of the United States, your values can be in normal range, where in another region of the United States, it, it could be considered pathology. It is a very regional. There's a reason why they did it. I understand the reason why they did it. But as an individual who it doesn't necessarily want to be uh, categorized by the ge geography of where they got their blood tests done, there is a dramatic difference between what is considered quote unquote normal and then what is actually a healthy value. So that's the first place where we've had to start is recalibrating the recalibrating the numbers so that you can see where you are truly in the healthiest range versus actually this is already starting to become an issue for you. That is so true. And we always tell people normal isn't normal. You want to know what is your normal. I don't want to be compared with everyone else in America. I want to know what's a net reader's normal. So you're so right. I agree with you with that. And one of the things too, that again, a lot of doctors don't like to get into is that you can, not, the, the tests are based on, again, percentages and large populaces. So if you are like, uh, the, the numbers change, but it's basically about between 95 to 98%. So they try to find people who, okay, if you're within this percentage, okay, that is an accurate test. Well, here's the, one of the interesting things. What if you're in the five, three to 5%? that didn't fall into that standardization. Now you are being told that you have an issue that you know genetically that just may be where you land. And so one of the problems that we're running into with a, with a lot of individuals who are getting diagnosed with things is you have to have the time to take, okay, this is what that blood test says, but now let's compare it to what's actually going on. Let's compare it to what's actually happening and then to cross-reference. And see, that's a big part of what's happening now because because doctors are getting so regulated and they're they're being the bureaucracy is limiting what they're allowed to do. They are not allowed to run the cross referencing tests to find out, hey, is that is that normal? Is that number actually just normal for you? And then to just watch it over time to make sure. So that in itself has also become a, a real issue, especially as our doctors have had to go. They've, they've gotten more and more specialized. 
they've become less of whole person perspective. And then also it, on top of that, they just, they just don't have the time and the resources to look at you as an individual. Right. I so agree with that. So when I, I had an issue back in 2010 where I had a procedure done, which totally shocked me, but the procedure that they did can actually cause ovarian cancer. So I will test my ovarian cancer scores very regularly. And if it changes at all, then I address it with changing my diet, exercise, making sure I'm exercising, make sure I'm supplementing correctly because it only goes up when I don't. And, but the doctor keeps saying, and that those are normal scores. Those are good scores. I was like, no, but that's not my normal and my normal just changed. And so when I see a change, when I see a shift, then something's up and we need to take care of it. And that needs to start being serious about what she's doing and not goofing off. And this is what you're saying. What is your normal? What is going on in your body? And then also what I believe you're going to go to next is there's other elements on the blood test that may also direct back to, okay, that's why this shift is happening. That's it. In having those corresponding factors. And I love, you are absolutely right. The best diagnostic criteria is watching it over time. Uh That is far and away the most accurate way to truly know what's going on. And you do have to have that consistency and that track record and having even having your your blood tests to be able to watch that for yourself. I run into so many times now that the, you know it, the difficulty of even getting your lab results sometimes. And that's one of the reasons why I send over every single person gets their own copy so that you can be measuring it and and watch and and look at your track record over time because that's going to tell you far more than just you know throwing you into like here's the general populace and those numbers one of the other things i things that we don't like to talk about and and and, and doctors we don't like to necessarily tell you is there's certain tests we don't like to run even though they can have a tremendous amount of impact on how on your life and and diagnostically and the reason why your doctor doesn't want to run those is because they don't necessarily have a pharmaceutical protocol to attach to it exactly when there are blood tests that come back and the protocol for those issues is a nutritional one and when it's when it's a lifestyle one your doctor already knows that's going to be a long conversation. And in, in this is one of those things, unfortunately, you said a lot behind closed doors. A lot of doctors have just lost faith that, that the general population will make any kind of changes. They don't, some doctors really don't believe that you'll do it. So if they take that time, if they take that extra 10 minutes to go through and to give you the, the dietary changes, they feel like it may be a waste because you're not going to do it anyway. Now, that's an unfortunate thing that's kind of happened. And again, that's back to a lot of the bureaucracies and the the, the time re- restraints. But there are a significant number of people who have conditions that are completely, re- they're, re- they're very reversible and they can be, be done all natural diet lifestyle, but your doctors just won't run the test because they don't have a fast, easy protocol for it. And that's one of the reasons why I run those tests, um, because that's the we designed the whole system around to not not just find these 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 things, but to get you truly healthy all the way down to the cellular level. I so agree with that, and and I can respect the doctor's time, and it is very short. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, when I would go, when I used to go to this one specific doctor, I liked him because his wife had gone through all of my t- classes, and so he was always asking me more questions than I was asking him. And I said, why don't you teach people? Because I was teaching milling your own grain and making your own bread, because that's totally different than anything you can buy in the store or get at the restaurant. And he says, Annette, no one's going to do that, which was sad, but he's 99.9% correct. If I I say, well, teach them to buy organic. And he says, they'll say it's too expensive. I mean, everyone has excuses like, like cards in their pocket, which, which excuse am I going to play? And so you're right. They don't want to spend the time, invest the time because the person's probably not going to do it. And I so agree with you, but I'm so glad people are watching this video because we know they want to invest the time and they want the healing that God has promised. So we're talking to a whole totally different audience here. 
And that's, that's the rewarding part about the, the work that we get to do is because we, we do know we're talking to people who are, they have their hand up and say, I'm willing, yes. I'm willing to do the extra work so that I can live the, the life that I was meant to live um, and, and to have the health. The other thing your doctor doesn't want to talk about is how over-dependent we are becoming on technology for diagnostic criteria. This is becoming, this is getting worse and worse. Now, granted, um, again, I'm dating myself. I was trained before really the internet was something, there was, there was no Google um, whenever I was learning you know, differential diagnosis. We are very much going into an age where it's not, we're not far away from where an AI is going to be doing a lot of the diagnosing, the, the diagnosing. We are, we're, we're already there. Right. Um, and this over-dependence on technology is, is, is concerning to me because there is an absolute human element. And I, I, I while I do understand that a computer can memorize chess moves to understand the intricacies of a bio of our biochemistry because there, we still by science we still cannot even make a human eye we can't we can't <laughs> create life in science and so to take and try to do to, to try to take an artificial technology and and to apply it to something that we still can't even we can't even do. <laughs> We can't do some of the most basic factors yet in science, but we're letting computers take over um, as to trying to figure out. That just doesn't make sense to me. And so while I understand it's efficient and while I understand insurance companies are really excited about this, this shift, because now we're just we're able to put even people faster. And I think the pharmaceutical industry is probably excited about it as well. I have no, I, I, I'm just supposing on that, but we're, we're taking people on a faster track straight to those, those different pharmaceuticals. With regards to your lab work, um, especially those who have been getting trained in the last 20 years. You know, I was trained by uh, those who know my story. I was trained by the old timers. I was trained by the, I was trained by the doctors who they, they were the country doctors who had to go out and they had to figure out what was wrong with, with very little tools and resources. So for me, like having, it's, it's so much fun to have blood work because it was, it's, it's such a luxury compared to the training that I, I was, I was in. But now watching um, so many of these these um, students coming out of the, all the different schools who, if they don't have their tablet, they don't know what to do. Right. And and we don't want to talk about that. And, and, I, and I understand, but that is a very, very much a concern as we keep moving forward of the lack of the lack of experience of really understanding the intricacies and and how if this number's up, but this number's down and how all of those factor in. And then what do you do on a natural standpoint to address that? I so agree with everything that you've been sharing and totally my husband and I, we are always checking our values and we do it either every six months or every year, depending on what the test is. And what is the time frame that you want people to be checking their blood work? So when we first are looking, we I usually want to see people back within 90 days because there's such a massive cellular turnover time within 90 days. I mean, while there's there's variations, you're you're almost a new person when you look at the cellular turnover time. And what and that's one of the we can catch it so quickly and learn from that. And so that is one of my favorites to right away, 90 days later, find out what's that what's going on. And then based on your your issues, based on your family history, based on there's a multitude of factors. Some people need to be checked, you know, every 90 days because there's a, a major issue. A lot of people, six months is a wonderful time frame for those younger individuals who don't have much of a family history uh, to deal with and whatnot. You know, annually checking in just to make sure everything's staying on track. That that's a wonderful option. I so agree. And then, so some people are going to say, "Well, I haven't had my blood work checked in years." And so, what would you say to that? This has become really common. Um, the pandemic got a lot of individuals off of their rhythm uh, of going in and getting annual checkups. And then there is a there is a significant percentage of the population, and you know the, that um, 
they just don't really like doctors. Uh, and I understand. I, I, I do. Um, I, I, I understand why they say that. And so, and they, and they know they're going to walk in and they know they're not going to take the prescription medications that they're being told. So what's the point? What's the point of going through the whole process? So yes, I have absolutely seen a lot of these individuals. And one of the things that I, I, I was just before we we get on here. I was on a conversation with an individual who has just not since they had COVID, they have not been able to fully recover, and that is for a lot of individuals. You know, post COVID now we're we're getting a couple years out, but post COVID we really need to get a new baseline because you may not be. Bio, on a biochemical level, you may not be the same person you were before. And now we need to address and really be looking at you from that paradigm to, okay, now from this level, how do we take you? How do we take you up? How do we get you to the vitality and the energy and the stamina and the clarity that you're looking for? Um, and, and again, just because you've been struggling doesn't mean you need to continue to struggle. I so agree with that. So number one, get a baseline. Number two, then, then they're going to, especially if they do it with your exploratory blood panels, which I highly recommend, especially because you, you nailed it when it's like, some people are like, well, why do I want to go to the doctor? I'm not going to do what he says anyway. And so doing the exploratory blood panels through you, you actually get to meet with you and go over it. And that's going to be very helpful. And then you'll be able to determine okay, how often do we need to retest to see if we're on the right track? And that is so valuable. I always tell people the, the least you can do is get your vitamin D level checked and then you know where you are and then start taking the supplement. I'll put a link to that down below. It is like the bomb for vitamin D. It just changes chemistry so quickly. But then you, even with that, you have to test every quarter until you know what amount you have to take per day to keep you at the optimal level. And so that's just a simple explanation. But what you're saying is like, well, with other lab values as well, what types of foods are going to work best to bring that blood, blood value to where you want it to be? And do you need a supplement to help accentuate that? And then as you retest, then you're narrowing it down. It's like, okay, we are getting into your groove of what is truly gonna put you at the most optimal level of health possible. And that's, that's what we need to do. And one of the things that I have found, I'm a huge, huge fan of supplementation. Um, there's a lot of things that, you know, you, you just can't eat your way back from. I mean, there's, there are, there are the needs for that, but I am finding a lot of people who are taking supplements that are just really doing nothing for them because they're taking it for the wrong reasons. They just picked it up because, you know, they matched a symptom to this particular supplement. And so we're able to really fine tune and refine down for a lot of individuals, which let's, let's just, you know, there's no, there's no point in wasting. I mean, it's not that they're, the supplements are hurting them, but they're, you know, it's just not effective. And that's, I, I'm very much about efficiency and value and, and, and again, avoiding wastefulness. So refining down what foods are right for you. Let's get rid of the ones that aren't. Let's get to, to the lifestyle that's going to work the best for you. And again, we, we're not going based on like, maybe I feel this way today. Maybe I don't feel that way. Cause if we're chasing symptoms around that, oh, that's going to get, get very, very confusing using the bio data. What is your body saying? Cause I had uh, just recently, I had somebody who said, I, you know, I'm drinking a ton of water, but your body is saying it wants more. So we have to figure out what's going on there because, you know, again, on a, on a level, I would say, yeah, that's probably enough. But once we got to the biochemistry, it, it just simply wasn't. And their kidneys were starting to suffer because of that. So yes, absolutely. If you know, just testing, refining, and then figuring out and then working with that protocol. So good. So good. All right, Dr. J, thank you so much for this valuable information. This is where we start one, giving people hope and two, helping people to save their life. Um, because there's nothing worse than spending money on supplements that are not working for you or that you don't need. But the only way we can sometimes di discover this is through blood work. And so I love the, the opportunity that you offer people to be able to get it done and to be able to meet with you to see, you know, how that works. And many people, when I've suggested this before, they always want to know, well, how much does she charge? So all you do is pay for the blood work. The consult comes free with it. 
And so there's no additional fee for meeting with Dr. J. So just so everybody understands that. I'll put a link to it down below. Her website is very clear as to how the system works. And we just so appreciate everything you do, Dr. J. Is there anything else you want to share with people? I just really am. If if you are one of those who you just haven't really been back to the doctor or haven't been able to reestablish yourself, it's time. It It really is time. And I am starting to see where individuals who have just gotten out of the rhythm of getting their blood work done, they've, you know, it's been four years, five years, you know, especially if you're over the age of 40, it's, it's time to get it checked. Let's not let things get out of control so that, and let's keep it simple so we can just dial, dial back anything that's, uh, that's emerged. And let's just get you an awesome new baseline for, for, you know, the next years. All right. I so agree with that. Well, thank you everyone for letting us share with you God's recipe for excellent health and anytime we can talk about the blood and the blood work, yes, that's going to be an answer to part of that recipe. And if you haven't already, if you want to study more on what we teach about these courses, go to Biblical Nutrition Academy. Also, I will put a link down below to the exploratory blood panels. You can investigate that for yourself. And there's so much more content that we want to share with you, but make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and the bell so we can stay connected. Thanks for watching.